there have been huge news on AI on multiple fronts. There's an uh, increase in your ability to have uh, productive AI, be able to do complex skills, be able to create things like uh, an elaborate uh, PowerPoint or stock analysis. And then this will also be an advance of AI with science, where we'll go beyond papers to uh, just research papers and have them become living, dynamic, interactive AI that can explain themselves to you and work with uh, researchers to speed up the scientific development. And there's been uh, developments with XAI being able to improve the productivity and usefulness of X for nearly a billion users for this multi-billion dollar company. So um, these things are all advancing very, very quickly. So I'm going to go over the, uh, the first parts. Um, so um, there's a scientific research paper um, called Paper to Agent which converts research papers into AI agents. So the AI reads the paper and then converts all of the um, supplemental information with data files, with uh, code, with methodology, and then makes it into a live interactive agent that can answer questions about the paper, makes all the um, data live, makes them into working programs that again can be um, queried and interacted with. And the potential to have these, each paper with an AI agent talk to other papers and also creating you know, larger simulations, say around um, all of the, um, uh, I say physics, you know, all the ones on physics, all the ones on chemistry, all the ones on certain subsections could be used on that. So there's you know, a lot to this one, but then one that is... Um, um, so is this, so are you, that's, that's your whole setup on that one? Okay, so let me ask you some questions. <laughs> sure. From because if, if, I, if I'm confused, maybe somebody else is too. Yeah. All right, so this will, as you say, turn it into an agent. Yeah. So if I am outside, I'm, I'm somebody looking for information about the subject. Yeah. Right now, if I look for the information about the subject, I go to Google, I go to the paper. If I have access to the paper, which I don't always, yeah. but if I have access to the paper, then I can start reading it. I can do a find feature or whatever if I want to see if I can find what I'm looking for yeah. within the paper. But it's a pretty complex tour. Mm -hmm. and you're saying now that as it, it's because we be an agent and knows the paper backwards, forwards, and inside out. Yeah. As a user coming in, yeah. I can ask more complex questions, and it would be able to just give me answers like Rock does now, but with specifically about that paper. Is that, is right. That right? Also things like you could have static charts and things showing you here's what, you know, this um, DNA, RNA proteins around some cell are doing, right? And then this can bring that to life and, and show you can interact with the, the, the table or chart to, to pull out more information, to have it explained to you, to say, uh, an, another researcher might say, well, what if we had other assumptions about it? How could we reinterpret this, this analysis? Um, how, how good is this data? Um, what if we change and, and I load this other data into it? You know, what would happen to it, right? All right. And so then, you, yeah. okay. okay, and then alternatively, if I'm the person who wrote the paper or I'm the one who is uh, involved in the paper mm -hmm. and I want to keep up to date because everything's changing so fast in every single field, yeah. then I can give my agent uh, directions or instructions with regard to looking for anything out there every single day yeah. uh, that might be applicable to the paper. Right. Uh, and then letting me know that here's a new paper that's got this, or here's right. uh, some information that's coming in uh, because, or, you know, somebody's uh, making queries about the paper uh, yep. in public. So, all of those kinds of things would also be done by the agent on a regular basis. That's right. That's right. And then, so this uh, segues into being able to do um, more complicated skills with AI instead of just doing a chat, you know, question answer kind of interaction or to up level what you're doing. So Anthropic Claude AI has introduced skills with, uh, you know, directions about how to do certain tasks in more detail, kind of a best practice approach. And they, you can make more of these skills 
and they have a bunch of samples and examples that people are sharing and improving upon. Um, they only load a block of code or instruction when it's relevant to the particular question that you have. Um, and it becomes like um, deeper instructions and, and best practice guidance around um, something that you're doing. So, um, th so they have them on GitHub where you, they sh share code. And um, so there it is, oops, let's see here. Um, sorry, let me go back. Okay, so here we have MCP Builder. So the MCP Builders are frameworks for agents. So here's an example of, um, oops, of this, the skill file. So it gives, but if I'm gonna develop an, an AI agent uh, server development guide, you know, it'll say, here's an overview, here's the process, the workflow that you wanna go through to do it. Um, and so it gives, you know, multi pages of instruction about how to do it and refers also to other best practice files. So things that would have taken, you know, someone, you know, hours or days to do now is shareable so that you can get to a best practice thing on how to do it. And if you didn't have the skills or the knowledge to do it, you can now learn them. And it's in, you know, readable file format. And you can take these files, not just for, uh, and use them in Claude. Since they're just text files, I can then load them into, you know, ChatGPT, Grok, um, Gemini, whichever system I want to do. And they have um, many, many fo folders here. And there's other individuals who have other folders like this. And this is something that will um, take everyone's productivity up, get better, more consistent results. And it will be something that will be constantly improving and shared upon. And if you have multiple skills together, then you can have a job, right? Mm -hmm. And then these kind of skills and instructions could be also applied to that, you know, scientific paper type work too. Sure. So it's, um, it's taking everything and, and adding um, more workflows, more complexity uh, to achieve higher level results for what we're, what we're doing. All right. So I'm, uh, uh, you know, been doing this for, I don't know how, how I guess it's uh, almost 55 years, mm -hmm. you know, working with computers and whatnot, but I'm overwhelmed by all the AI stuff that's come out now. And mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm old. Yeah, <laughs> because I've always been overwhelmed by it until yeah. I learn it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I'd like to be able to use the graphics stuff a lot better than I can. Mm -hmm. I go in there, I try to get a, a great uh, picture or great uh, uh, illustration for something I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whoever I'm using, it gets it wrong. I give it another prompt. It's still got it wrong. It's like, then I give it a third prompt to, to edit it in a certain way, and it gets yeah. that part right and changes something else. So <laughs> I'm guessing that we'll, we're going to be starting to get like lots and lots of these libraries of appropriate prompts yeah. that are the most likely to give us the result that we're looking for. Would that be fair? Yeah, that's fair. And then you can also see that you could have some kind of um, trusted agent um, that, say, represents you know, AI influencer, ABC, mm -hmm. who could put like, you know, one person is currently selling a package of 25 complex prompts with the vibe coding right. to Excel use, et cetera, like that, selling it for like 18 bucks per, per block or 500 bucks for 25, set of 25. So if you trusted that person, mm -hmm. taking the two together of making a scientific AI agent Right. And then ha having this prompt thing, you could have someone who's your your um, your AI prompting guru, right? Mm -hmm. And for videos, for you know um, other production tasks, right? And then have that AI agent guide you for that, and then that individual will be updating his agent, and then you could be see something where it passes through and in you know, the agent representing the person, and then you would have some subscription to the actual individual to say, hey, I, I you know, got a certain thing, got stuck, you know, we need to up level or do something. So then there'd be this more complex interaction uh, around that. So it would be, um, you know, again, 
identifying and then making it so that um, people could give um, consulting and guidance and, and up-level like everyone. Right. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Um, and then, so, so um, there's other ones like for stock uh, finance where it's like, you know, identify risk about the company, doing some other, you know, reviewing the, um, the last few calls, uh, earnings calls, uh, doing other stuff. So you can have, um, you know, more and more of these um, templates for how to practice. Like it, it can also specify more about how you want it, the results to be, mm -hmm. to be done. So then um, there have been other announcements about X and XAI. So you want to go over that. Yeah. So, okay. So the two probably most, the, the questions I hear the most about X mm -hmm. are the things that I see the most complaints about on X are I'm a newbie. And listen, I have, uh, what do I have now? 15,000 followers, something like that. So I'm not exactly a newbie. Mm -hmm. I've kind of been at it for a while, but I put out some amazing content every day that doesn't get hardly any viewership. Mm -hmm. And, but what about a newbie that's got no followers or 10 or 20? They put, they might put out the, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the proof that there are no black holes mm -hmm. and, and it's right. And only 12 people would see it. Right. So, so this has been a big complaint. Um, and the other big complaint has been the opposite kind of, which is, okay, I'm in here. And I'm the main reason I'm on X is I want to hear football. I want to hear all the top players. I want to hear what they're doing. I want to make some decisions about how I'm going to play the, play uh, my bets this weekend. Um, and all I'm getting is uh, uh, pictures of uh, little kids playing with their dogs, you know? And so uh, somewhere along the line, because I swiped or didn't swipe or whatever I did, the algorithm thinks I want to see pictures of kids with dogs. So here's the two things that they're saying they're going to do. This is from Elon today. Uh, he says the X recommendation system is evolving very rapidly or aiming for deletion of all heuristics within four to six weeks. Grok will literally read every single post, watch every single video. That's a hundred million per day and then match users with content. They're most likely to find interesting. So that addresses the first part of it. So now my post, if it's valuable, if it's useful, if it uses keywords, probably have to be a little more careful about keyword uh, use in, uh, in posting now, then Grok is going to be able to direct it more exactly to the people that are looking for that kind of content. The opposite of that is we will be adding the, your, the ability for you to adjust your feed temporarily or permanently just by asking Grok, and so that way you just say, hey, Grok, really, I don't want to see anything else except football stuff. Mm -hmm. And then Grok will, you know, be able to follow your direction on that. Or these are the kinds of things I'm interested in, but I don't want to see any more, uh, anything, anything else about little kids with dogs. Okay. So it looks like it'll be far more productive and um, perhaps um, um, dynamically um, reactive to uh, everything that's, that's coming into the system. 100%. Seems to me like this is the biggest announcement yet. Right. And and for um, AI and, and for for revenue and that kind of thing, that um, you have OpenAI leading with um, 800 million users and, um, you know, um, probably like 80% of the um, AI activity. And then you have um, Anthropic probably next, with about um, 15%. And then at the this 5% level or so, you have um, XAI and, and, and Google. So um, having it be far more productive for um, for X um, with you know close to a billion people um, ca can be something where it could um, take off and, and, and get um, deeper penetration and, and to potentially win the AI game and increase their revenues from like, you know, 3 billion up to um, you know five or ten, which gets to the range of where OpenAI is. I think OpenAI made about eight billion dollars in the first half of the year, so it might get to fifteen billion dollars for the full year, and then um, Anthropic that like five billion. So uh, getting more competitive for for the three companies. Right, right, and and along those lines, if people are not using Grok um, as a methodology for finding out more about a post. 
are finding out whether it's real or not, you know, whether it's true. I, I've just, I, I hit, I must do it now 10 times a day where I want to validate something. Maybe I'm using it for content. I need to validate it before I can put it up. Maybe I'm questioning some part of it. Maybe one stat's wrong and I need to, val I need to find out whether the stat is off or maybe it's just strictly a case of that's a great prompt for me going deeper on a subject. And it's just like, you know, all you do is tap the little grok symbol and all of that, all that world becomes available to you. It's just incredible. Right. And then Elon has also said that he's going to, that um, X content creators are underpaid right. and that he's going to try and um, adjust that to, to get them more competitive with YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I, I told my wife I'm getting I'm making three hundred a month, and I told my wife that my goal is to make a thousand. I didn't know Elon was going to be the one that made it made it happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, anything else in terms of uh, AI or XAI? Oh, yeah. Well, there was one more. Um, uh, you probably saw it too, which was Google saying that they had a, a cancer a cancer a study. Mm -hmm. uh, where the, they were able, where the, where their system, their deep seek system, whatever was it, not deep seek, deep, deep mind, mind yeah. was able to actually do innovative work mm -hmm. and it, and the innovative work that it did prove to be useful. Mm -hmm. So this would be very definitely a breakthrough. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, various ways that AI is uh, accelerating the, science discovery, which was one of the big hopes that uh, all the AI leaders, you know, Sam Altman, right. Elon, right. Uh, Demis Asabas, their, their big goal is um, major scientific discoveries, major improvements in human health from AI. Right. Right. 100%. Yep. Okay. So I think um, people need to stay up to date with this. Um, we have a book coming out about um, super intelligence. Um, so, um, you can tell them about that. Yeah, sure. It's called AI Rising, How to Thrive in the Age of Abundance. So there's a lot in there. We believe that we're coming into an age of abundance, but there's going to be challenges like we've seen, I don't know, 25 times in the, in the last 140 years. We've seen some kinds of professions go away and new professions uh, start up. Uh, and there's all kinds of issues with regard to the stack, whether the, everything from... Uh, mining and refining all the way through applications. So there's all kinds of problems. Well, we cover all of that in the book and it should be out uh, for pre-orders, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, um, and, uh, and then uh, out for a real uh, sometime, I'm hoping before the end of the month. Um, and then maybe the audible version won't be out quite at the same time, might be another week or so. That sounds great. So it was, um, um, Randy and I were the main authors, but we also had a lot of help from a lot of other um, people in the Tesla and XAI community, um, Sir Basher, Bradford Ferguson, uh, Phil Black. So we have a, a forward by um, Robert Scoble. Um, um, I think um, Dr. Know-it-all, um, also- um, Larry Goldberg. Larry Goldberg, yeah, so. Yeah, we probably left out somebody, that'll be bad. Yeah. Oh, the young, the kid. Yeah. We left out the kid, Nicholas Gibbs. Nicholas Gibbs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so um, I think a, a lot of good material there and obviously a lot to keep updated upon. So uh, we're going to keep you updated on AI and also obviously uh, for on Tesla and, and all the other important topics that are affecting you. So like and subscribe and then comment below and we'll talk to you next time.